All right, ladies and gentlemen. Time to get your large pot heated up. And over at our prepping area, we're gonna chop up some vegetables. So over here I have one yellow onion, one green bell pepper, and roughly two good sticks of celery. Uh, two good sticks of celery is all you need, but all I had left in the fridge was one long one and two short ones. So, math. You do it. All right, let's knock this out. Choo! Paya! Oh, boy, don't let your mama name you Trinity. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, no. I might have to bust out the white tape. That's a crime scene. All right, ladies and gentlemen, to our hot pot, we're adding one fourth cup of olive oil. Next, throw down your vegetables. And then you get to work. Okay, so we're gonna cook these down for about 10 minutes. And then after the 10 minute mark, we're gonna add some tomato paste. So while our vegetables are sauteing, we got four cloves of garlic that we're gonna get chopped up. And there you go. Let's keep sauteing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it has been roughly 10 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and add some tomato paste. I've opened both sides of the can here because I have been told that makes it a lot easier. Well, look at that. <laughs> okay, let's get this moving. Okay, so we got this blended pretty well. So you want to continue to let this saute for another 10 minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. At this time, you will also go ahead and throw your garlic in. Bam. So it's been about 10 minutes. At this point, we are going to go ahead and add two 10 ounce cans of mild Rotel tomatoes. Get that blended in. We're also gonna let this saute down for another 10 minutes. All right, so we are getting close to the 10 minute mark here. Now, what I like to do at this point is mash down these tomatoes as much as I can. Now, if you like big chunks of tomato in your sauce, you don't have to do anything, but I just like to do this. Okay, this looks really good. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and add two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. Ooh, oh man, come on, get off me. I'm gonna need a bath after this. And the other one. Ugh, that's getting everywhere. There you go. Stir this around. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now you want to go ahead and add three 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. There you go. And blend that around. Looking good. Okay, so now we're gonna add some flavor to this sauce. First, we will add one fourth cup of sugar. And you may think this is a lot, but trust me, there's a lot of tomato up in here and this will help reduce the acidity. Next, one tablespoon of parsley flakes. Let's go ahead and blend that in. We will add one teaspoon of basil, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of coarse black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this around because it's getting hot on the bottom. I don't want nothing to stick down there. That's what she said. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. That'll work. And three bay leaves. Look at that. Pretty impressive. Blend those in. Okay, so we're going to add two cups of water, but I'm gonna put them in my cans over here and just kind of move the water in and out those cans so I can get any lingering crushed tomato or sauce that's still left over in the cans. Let's do this. Nice. All right, we're gonna stir this around really good. All right, so at this time, we're gonna raise our heat up so we can try to bring this to a slight boil. All right, when you start to see it doing that, go ahead and cover it up and lower your fires to a simmering heat. We're gonna let this simmer for two hours. So I just wanna let you guys know that it is okay to come and uh, stir this probably once every 20 minutes or so, you know, just to make sure nothing's really caking down to the bottom here. Ooh, boy, this looks and smells so good. Yes, indeed. And just go ahead and cover that back up and keep letting it simmer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you want to start getting a pan heated off to the side. Once this pan has been heating for about five minutes, go ahead and drop in a small amount of oil just to get the bottom coated. Next, we will drop in one pound of ground beef and one pound of a hot blend breakfast sausage. Whew, there we go. We're gonna work on getting this mixed around. Whoa, get back over there. I already know. Some of you authentic Italians out there are gonna get on me about not using sweet Italian sausage or whatever Italian sausage you deem necessary. But look, this is Cajun Ninja lasagna. You do you. Okay, so I'm gonna add some seasoning to this. We won't need much because the breakfast sausage will have some flavor to it, but I'm gonna put a teaspoon of some Cajun seasoning and a teaspoon of some garlic powder. There you go. Get mixing. Smells good, huh, buddy? <laughs> At about this point, you wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. So this is looking really good here. We're gonna go ahead and drain this and then just leave it off to the side until we're ready to put the lasagna together. Okay, so we have drained the meat and wiped down this pan, and now we're going to add a stick of butter to this pan. And get started on a bechamel. All right, so now that the butter is melted, we will be adding one half cup of all-purpose flour. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're making a roux. Get stirring. So what we did here, ladies and gentlemen, was pretty much made a little blonde looking roux. This one's probably a little bit more tan than where I needed to go, but my pan was kind of hot. Still gonna work though. We cooked out some of the air here, probably about 10 minutes. Now we're gonna add four cups of warm milk and we're gonna stir in a little bit at a time here. Add some more. And you just keep adding until it gets to be a creamy mixture. Beautiful. Some more. And this is pretty much what you end up with, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna add a little bit of flavor to this. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. 
Bam. Ready to blend that around. So look, instead of using ricotta cheese, ricotta, whatever, I like to go with this blend right here. I feel it just gives a nice creamy consistency to a lasagna. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is good right here. We can go ahead and turn all our fires off and start fixing our lasagna. We are loaded down, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this beautiful sauce over here. Woohoo! What you think, gumbo? <laughs> you guys got to see this. That is a good sauce right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that is good. Good stuff. Okay, so we're going to start off by taking a small amount of this sauce and layering the bottom of our dish here. And if we see any bay leaves, we make sure we pull them out. Okay, next we're going to put in raw lasagna noodles. If you're worried about it, don't be. Because it's going to cook down with a lot of sauce in here. And it's going to soak up all that yummy goodness. Yes, indeed. Oh, that one's broken. I might change that one out. Okay, we're going to add a nice layer of sauce. Now look, I like to layer it on thick. That's just me. Next, we will add some of this meat mixture here. All right, now we're gonna add some of this bechamel, which is pretty much a white gravy. So if uh, you like biscuits and gravy, the leftovers of this stuff is perfect for you. Okay, from here we're gonna razzle-dazzle some uh, fresh grated Parmesan cheese. Uh, not too, too much, just a little bit. But if you like a lot of it, throw it down, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so the cheeses. Now, if I haven't mentioned, what we have here is fresh provolone, fresh Havarti cheese, and fresh mozzarella. I buy the fresh half-pound blocks from my local deli, and I grate them myself, or shred them, whatever you call it. Okay, so we will be grabbing the fresh provolone first. Uh, I'm making a little mess, but it's okay. Throw it down. There we go. Now we're going to put down some more raw pasta. I know you're freaking out about it. I can hear gumbo running in here right now. <laughs> All right. Look, I took that broken one I switched out and just took some pieces off of that one and Made a little extension. Right on. Let's add another fresh layer of pasta sauce. Pasta sauce. Okay, we're gonna repeat those steps. Okay, at this point we are adding the Havarti cheese. Cause I like the mozzarella to be on top. And the Havarti is a very creamy cheese. So it's a good cheese to have in the middle. All right, so when you add this third layer of pasta, I like to push it down gently, just so I can really cake on that last bit on the top. There we go. Start adding more sauce. So look, it's not a bad thing if you only have a thin layer of meat left. You really want the sauce and cheese to shine on the top layer of a lasagna. So look, before we top off this final layer of cheese, you probably see a lot of sauce and bechamel left over. But look, that's a great thing. You just bag up this sauce, jar up this sauce, whatever you like. Freeze it, same with this bechamel, and you can have this whenever you like. Fresh sauce, fresh white gravy, don't get no better. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna cover this up with some foil and let it cook for 30 minutes. 
and then I'll uncover it and let it cook for another 30 minutes. All right, let it cook. Well, see what happened was, <laughs> all right, let's take a look. Got to try to get this foil off here. Ooh, looking good. Oh, perfect. All right, let's get it back in and let it cook for another 30 minutes. Right here, we will be increasing our heat to 375 degrees. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I got two gallon-sized Ziploc bags of marinara and one of bechamel. Now, I wish I could have put these in some quart-sized ones, but I was out. But you get the point. Save that. pay -ya! Yes, indeed. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna let this bad boy cool off for about 10 minutes, and then we will cut in. Well, let's cut into this bad boy. It's always hard getting this first piece. <laughs> I should have used a knife. That's okay. It's not gonna work. Oh, okay. Oh. Ah, oh, my cheese. Hey, how about that, huh? <laughs> Look at all that creamy goodness up in there. Ooh, I'm ready to dive in! Oh man, nothing like a good plate of lasagna. And boy does this one just look full of creamy goodness. I mean, you can really see the sauce. You know, you can see where the bechamel mixed in with the marinara, and then the layers of cheese are just oozing out of it. So it is making my mouth water. But uh, enough talk. Let's take a bite. There we go. Self-destruct sequence activated. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. It has that good traditional lasagna texture and taste of marinara and creamy cheese, you know, but that hot breakfast sausage blended in the mix of it all, it gives it that little bit of Cajun flair to it. I love it, it's so good. And the pasta's cooked beautifully. It's kind of like a good al dente, maybe, maybe cooked a little more than al dente. So it's got that good, nice bite to it. Oh, it's so good. Oh my God, it's a magnificent. I'm sorry, Italian people, I'm sure I messed that up. That's some more, eh? <laughs> well, look guys, thank y'all for tuning into this one. If you make this lasagna, please let me know. I love when you guys send me photos and you know, small video clips of the process. It makes me feel like you're truly going through the grind of it all, just like I did. And uh, furthermore, I love your feedback. So that is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for tuning in. 
I'll see you again soon. Hiya!